Corbin, Kentucky. Hello, Corbin, Kentucky. I've always wanted to see you for one reason, and it's right here. Yes, my friends, we are in Corbin, Kentucky, the birthplace of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Spinning bucket of chicken up there. Colonel Sanders' old gas pumps, kind of recreating where it would have been. Got the idea to make his famous fried chicken here. He told an interesting story. Um, about his work ethic take a look at this you can kind of see 1890 he was born in henryville indiana his dad actually died when he was five years old and he had to become the uh his mother would work by making clothes for the kids in the neighborhood and he had to cook the food it says here in 1906 he joined the army at the age of 16 sea service in cuba 1912 he organizes corporation and sells stocks for a ferry boat froman m coots to run between jeffersonville indiana and louisville so when he was 10 years old he got a job on a farm and he was getting paid two dollars a month room and board and he was the first job that he was given was he was asked to go clear a path behind the barn and he said during that month he probably cleared about an acre and said that with all the butterflies and the red birds and everything he was seeing he was kind of distracted and at the end of the month the man that hired him decided he didn't want him to stay on any longer and so he got fired and when his mom found out when he came home and told her he was fired she said how could you be such a good for nothing you're my oldest son you're all I have to help me take care of the other kids and help me make ends meet and you couldn't even keep a two dollar a month job he said after that tongue lashing he was so embarrassed that he decided every time he ever got a job after that for the rest of his life he was going to put everything into it and be the best he could possibly be at it 1930 harlan sanders moves to corbin kentucky where he operates his first restaurant it consists of a table and six chairs in front a small front room of his shell oil service station in 1931, it's a nice Colonel Sanders we wouldn't recognize. <laughs> 1931, moves across the road and begins Sanders service station selling pure oil products. The new location had a dining room for restaurant customers. Oh, they have the whole history here and a recreation. take a look at this sign over here this was closed down for quite some time and they've been working on it during covid especially they had it pretty much all down and decided to do like a major museum renovation which i think is back in here this is birth of a legend kentucky's most famous citizen colonel harlan sanders began the part of his life that brought him fame in a small gasoline service station on the opposite side of this highway so it would have been over here. Born on September 9th, 1890 near Henryville, Indiana, he left school at 12 to support his family. He held a wide variety of jobs as a farmhand, soldier, railroader, secretary, insurance salesman, and ferry boat operator until 1930 when he came to Corbin, moved his family into quarters behind the station and started pumping gasoline. This is when the main route to Florida from the north. Yeah, I had seen an interview and he said that was all what it was all about. He said um, he had a really successful service station here because Route 25 was the main route for everyone that was going from the Smoky Mountains to Florida. So he caught people going both ways and he said he soon found out if you made something good enough, the food was good enough, people would stop here every time going both ways and they wouldn't even care how much it costs. But he said once they he found out that they were going to do the interstate seven miles away. He knew it was gonna affect his business. And it says on here, traffic slowed during the Great Depression. And it says, so Sanders who enjoyed augmented his meager income by selling meals to tourists. 
His food was liked, his reputation grew, and his career as a restaurateur began. And then it says, so in 1932, Colonel Holland Sanders bought the small restaurant near this site. Here he combined good cooking, hard work, and showmanship to build regional fame for his fine food. His restaurant and a motel, now gone, flourished. To serve his patrons better, Sanders consistently experimented with new recipes and cooking methods. Here he created, developed, and perfected his world-famous Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe. In 1956, plans were announced for a federal highway to bypass Corbin. Threatened with the traffic loss, Sanders, then 66 and undaunted, sold the restaurant and started traveling America selling seasoning and his recipes for fried chicken to other restaurants. His success in this effort began the world's largest commercial food service system that made Kentucky a household word around the world. Yeah, he said himself that he would, uh, he would actually just like travel around. He would go to these places, he would like pop in and say, hey, can I cook you my chicken with the seasoning and you have to buy the seasoning off me? And they liked it and everything. And he said, and then he offered franchises. He said, you give me five cents per chicken. He said, because each chicken you can get three meals and make money three times out of, and he's only asking for five cents of that. And he said, before he realized it, that five cents was adding up to a thousand dollars a day for him. And I also found an interview of him talking about why he sold it for only two million dollars. He said he was making money and everything, but he said he was getting old. He thought he was going to die. And he said nobody in his family was gonna take it over and he just saw it as a big tax burden. So he said someone offered him $2 million and he figured, hey, I can live off of $2 million for the rest of my life, which he said, I soon found out I couldn't because he liked to donate money too much. And so he ended up selling it for $2 million and got hired to be the spokesman and the face and the logo and everything of the product. So he got paid for that for many years. And he said that uh, he would often go in the restaurants when he owned the franchise and everything, and he would just put his hand in the flour and touch it, and he could tell whether people were cheating the recipe or not. <laughs> and of course, he was known for the 11 herbs and spices. Let's go inside and have some KFC. What do you say? Let's see what's inside. Let's see the museum. He loved kids, so he donated a lot of money towards children's hospitals. He visited a lot of children's hospitals. He ended up not selling the rights for uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken to Canada and donated it to a company that would use the profits for scholarships. So he would give out thousands of scholarships with that money. He said that was a much better use than just leaving it to family or something like that. It's gonna be a cool experience. And he also was very religious, he found God. I mean, he was, he was always Catholic, but he got really into it later when it helped him quit cussing. He was a lifelong cusser and hated it and finally was able to give it up. All right, as soon as we walk in, this is what you see. There's a dining room in here. Old school KFC dining room, which I love. Oh, this is gonna be great. We'll get to kind of see how, what it really would have been like. You can order your food in here. You want something now? Hey, look at the Colonel. That's a Colonel Sanders weather vane. And if you haven't seen it, look up Colonel Sanders on my channel, because my sister's friend was actually friends with him when she was younger. Her family was family friends. <laughs> That's a hand-painted 1950s, well, 1950 Colonel Sanders sign. Look at this. Before he was the Colonel, he was a man, it says. A man on a mission that would involve hard work, dedication, and chicken. Where other men would have given up, this man would succeed making it a reality. The fruits of his labor, Kentucky Fried Chicken, his name. And there's Colonel. If you go to his house, you can actually see they have another bronze statue of him. Him in that classic cane. 
and there he is with that suit. He used to say with this suit, you can work in a Kentucky Fried Chicken and never get it dirty. They would show him oftentimes working in the, the kitchen making the chicken himself. And the lady that, you know, my sister was friends with said that, said he was notorious for like going in, checking everything, and just dumping their chicken out because they were doing things wrong. They wanted to experiment with his recipe and he would say, don't experiment with it, it's perfect. I already experimented with it. Let's look over here, some mementos. Harlan Sanders for state senate. It's his ID. He toured quarter of a million miles in a limo yearly promoting KFC. Here's his watch and belt buckle. Him and his wife Claudia. Registration card of his with his name and autograph and everything on it. Here we have the early days of the service station. Yeah, he ran this, uh, well, he ran the restaurant for 25 years before he realized that they were going to put the interstate in and it was going to bypass this town. So that's why he decided he needed to franchise it. He said he knew because how many people came here, he had a winning product. He just had to get it to the people. I'm a big fan of that wallpaper. <laughs> it's Colonel Sanders wallpaper. That's also another picture of the old gas station. And a young Harlan Sanders before he was Colonel Sanders. Czechoslovakian moosehead mug used as a shaving mug by Colonel Sanders' father. Harlan Sanders Jr. passed away at 9.30 this morning. That's sad. Alright, we're gonna walk back into the restaurant. Look at this. <laughs> It's actually got like a door, like you can go in there. Might be able to even eat in there. Then over here it says, model motel room. This model motel room was placed at the center of the cafe for a reason. Harled wanted to market his motel and show how nice his rooms were. By placing it here, anyone using the restroom or payphone would have to see it. <laughs> Marketing genius, right in the middle of the restaurant. This great 1940s motel had a less than sterling reputation when compared to nice hotels. Harlan knew this, also knew that his mother made the decision as to where the family spent the night. He put his model motel room in the middle of the cafe and made sure the women had to walk through to get to the restroom, seeing how nice it was. And it says, I've only had two rules. Do all you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Hmm. There's even a picture they decorated it with of the, uh, the old motel court, which we're basically in right now. And then there was also a public phone right across from the model room because it says they didn't have cell phones. You had to find a working payphone if you want to call someone at difficult times. Harlan offered this to his guests and as just one of the attractions. And then over here, as you pass by this, you get to the attractive restrooms. The shower, sink, showing off Sanders Motel Court. Showing off how you can have a nice stay here. I said this would have been the normal quality of one of the Sanders rooms. They have all kinds of little sayings under here too. It says, my life is devoted to business and supporting my family. There's something inside me that makes me want to help people, especially people who are having difficulty of some kind. And let's see what we have over here. I love that you have to eat in the old school eatery. 
So this would show, oh, okay. So this shows what they turned it all into, which is what we would, where we would be right now. And you can tell they didn't recreate the uh, the whole court because we're in this part of the restaurant and they just kind of connected this and this. But the original first site would have been across the street right there. Home cooking. Very interesting. Original property, where we are now. And what they recreated as a museum. Then the whole museum is in there. But over here you can take a walk through the kitchen. An original Sanders kitchen for making the chicken. And he used to use pressure cookers. That was one of his secrets was that he never used frozen chicken, always used a pressure cooker. I think it was like 29 pounds of pressure or whatever to seal in the juices, then the 11 herbs and spices and the egg wash and milk. And then over here we have toaster and the dishwash area with just a lot of quotes from him. Interesting. So that's what the original kitchen would have been like when they had this all going. Very cool. And then this will lead us back to, whoa, hello. The vault, whoa, 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 we're at the vault. Holy cow. That's so cool, it's just right there. Oh, and there's the pressure cooker. I mentioned that he was big on the pressure cooker. There's the pressure cooker that changed everything, it says. And then there's a uh, picture of him with it. And a drawing submitted for him to obtain a patent for it. So he bought this one at a local Corwin hardware store and ultimately used it to perfect his recipe. The secret. And if you wanted to buy it, here is the old packaging from the 60s and the current. And then they actually have a bunch of different spices on here, but it's definitely more than 11, so they're trying to keep you guessing here. But look at him go. Look at him go, yeah! Also helped Dave Thomas from Wendy's get his start. All right, let's go check out the museum over here. The early years, telling the whole story. I've kind of filled you in on some of it. Then here's the Colonel Sanders restaurant menus. There's the battery cables hook to sell battery cables from the original gas station. The menu and the original plates and everything that you would have ate on. There's a statue of them over here in the corner you can take your photo with. They've got some of the old signs in here. All kinds of memorabilia and then footage of him cooking and everything over here. Plus, look, the history of the bucket. I think Buckethead, the musician, has to give Colonel Sanders a lot of credit. I mean, he basically wouldn't have a head, or half of a head, without Colonel Sanders. So here's some of the, I never saw this one. I like this one, I like the old trusty with Colonel's face on it. Oh, and it actually has a thing where you can spin them around, a little wheel, see that? So you can see the whole bucket. Now 
NASCAR buckets. Oh, look at that. I would love to get my drinks out of that thing. That's awesome. <laughs> look at that big bag. Big cooler bag, so it's finger looking good. Yeah, too bad they abandoned that. That was such a great slogan, finger looking good. What an iconic image he had. Oh, a knitted like koozie for the bucket. <laughs> and there's the pot pie, baked beans, Colonel's baked beans. I never really got down with the program of calling it KFC. I really prefer Kentucky Fried Chicken because, I don't know, that was a cool name, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And like he said, it wasn't Southern Fried Chicken because that was just done a different way. It really had to be known as what it was, which was Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is showing Harlan meeting Pete Harmon in his first franchise location. And then here was the second Kentucky Fried Chicken, obviously. <laughs> Those are Crocs with Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, look, Buckethead. Yeah, I was talking about him. He was in Guns N' Roses for a while, but yeah, look at those Crocs. They have a piece of chicken on each one. Bob Hope. Norman Rockwell, Mickey Rooney. He always used to throw himself a big birthday bash too. Have like someone famous sing happy birthday to him. <laughs> Jaja. Kentucky Fried Chicken fire log that burns to smell like the chicken. They're calling him the original celebrity chef, which I guess I could agree with. <laughs> And then the little table here is the state of Kentucky. And look at all this stuff over here, the masks and everything, I love it. Even in comic book form, chess pieces. And this is showing a bunch of the actors that they hired to portray Colonel Sanders in all those commercials they did. The main voice is uh, Marion Ross's son, Bulldog Briscoe from Frasier. These are cool. I love all this stuff. Yeah, so when he sold it, he sold it to two guys for $2 million. They kept it for like seven years and then sold it for 240 something million dollars. And he said, that actually didn't make him mad because he said it just proved that the chicken was as good as he always knew it was. Gotta love that. Colonel, I love your mentality. <laughs> and that was a lot cooler than I even knew because that has some history. That is the original clay bricks. They have a description over here so you can read about everything and it says clay bricks are from the original smokehouse that stood behind the cafe the building was beyond repair but these bricks were painstakingly saved same bricks were used on the sanders court motel next door well that really is some cool history you must be proud colonel now let's go get some chicken have something to eat no gift shop or anything i was hoping to buy like some crazy clothes or postcards or something, but they don't really have anything. Although they do have the original red and white striped uniform. It says these were used when it was sold in the late 60s to early 70s. And he sold it in, I think, 1964. I stand corrected, they do have some merch. Right over here by the original Harlan Sanders Cafe sign over here. They do have t-shirts and aprons. 
Nice. Oh, you can even get a kernel fan. I ate where it all began. I'll have to get one of those. <laughs> and some KFC socks. Oh boy, awesome. And that's where the shirt says also I ate where it all began. And if you notice up here, they have etched glass that says Harlan Sanders. Kind of hard to see, but they said that was a reproduction of the way it originally was. Well, he just said my food's ready. Awesome. Gotta get the original leg, original style. And then I also got the uh, coleslaw mac and cheese biscuit. So to help support him, I bought two of the Colonel Sanders face fans because I'm gonna pick up Scott Michaels and I know he'll want one. I got the uh, KFC socks <laughs> with his face on there. Some postcards, yep. I'm just now noticing that not only is that the original setup of how it would have originally looked, but also that's one of the only remaining original tables. It's been a while since I've had KFC. That is good fried chicken. I figured I would just eat here right next to the original setup. So I kind of feel like I was really, really enjoying myself. And I'm looking at his suit while I eat. I usually don't crave fried chicken that often. That's why I don't have it very much. But this is a really good piece of chicken, I have to say. Wow. I consider myself a pretty picky coleslaw eater and I love theirs. So looking forward to that. Spot on. Oh, across the room I just noticed one of the best photos in this whole place I hadn't seen yet. Let's go look at it. It's the Colonel right out front with the birthplace of Kentucky Fried Chicken sign with the spinning sign over in the right. I love it. It's great. Kind of crazy how the most famous man of Kentucky wasn't even from Kentucky. <laughs> the uh, the entire museum and everything's free. Obviously you gotta pay for your own food, but uh, other than that you can walk in, look around, and everything, it's all free. And smiles from the Colonel are free also. All right, Colonel, until next time. It's kind of been a three year wait to get to see this place and it was totally worth it. I had a blast here. And I never get tired of seeing the spinning sign. Now we gotta go pick up Scott Michaels at the airport because he and I are gonna do Route 66 in two days. City of Florence, Kentucky, it says. All right, here we are, CVG Airport. It's Cincinnati, but it's technically in Kentucky. You ready to surprise Scott Michaels? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Thought you'd like to get picked up by a familiar face. Harland. <laughs> An ever familiar face. Good to see you, Scott. It's great to see you. And it's great to be in Cincinnati, Ohio, which I just is my favorite song by Connie Smith. A little bit of road <laughs> trip action for uh, the next two weeks, huh? That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to see a lot of stuff. So technically, Scott, now welcome to Ohio. Because as we go through this bridge, you're in Ohio now. Ohio. Ohio. Ohio as we <laughs> like to say sometimes, Ohio. <laughs> All right, my friends, we made it. I want to thank Lynn Dixon, Margaret Katona for becoming my newest Patreons. And thank you all for watching. We will start somewhere else tomorrow. We are not starting Route 66 tomorrow. We'll start at the following day. We have uh, quite a trip planned for tomorrow. So thank you all for watching. Obviously, we're going to end tomorrow in Chicago. But come along for the ride tomorrow. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night. And goodbye.